Right, this is going to be an interesting little video. I don't know how far I'm going to go with this in terms of telling you stuff, but there's a bit of a story here. First of all, <clears throat> you've got on the the left hand gable has been extensively replaced and it's a mess and I'll show you why it's a mess. It looks great, but actually it is not great. Um, what you've then got, the, the right hand section, uh, you can see it's a bit wonky and the reason it's wonky is that it's had what I call an art and craft makeover. Uh, it's completely ballsed up. And if you look at the difference between the timber panelling you get a fairly good idea that that's not original. Um, you look at these stupid raking struts and the very small thin timbers uh, and you compare them with the close spaced studding of the the side here you get a very quick understanding of the fact that this is not original so somebody has screwed this up and when was it screwed up and the uh, the evidence I think the clues are inside where there's a lot of oak panelling that's been brought in from somewhere else so I think it's art and craft uh, it's a complete mess and I'd strip it out and redo it I think this this stuff up the top here probably is original um, it's very difficult to unravel this place, but we're starting to. Um, but let's go back. What I want to show you is how things can go wrong. Now, this framing looks nice, but unfortunately it's not. And if you go inside, you'll begin to get a feel. You can see it's pouring in. There's water just absolutely pissing in here all over the place. Every joint, everywhere, the thing is just soaking wet. Um, up there, look, uh, all the way down the posts, underneath, everything is a complete and utter mess. When you look closely, this is why I spend so much time working with people trying to specify timber framework and what has to be done to the framing. Um, bit of a clue, someone's come along here and the joints have been filled with uh, it's a resin or a putty or something it's horrible but you can see it's already cracked and it's trapping moisture the other thing I don't like is this rubbish somebody's put lead on the uh, the base on the bottom of all of these why have they put lead on the bottom because lead traps moisture uh, under the lead and so you you get soft timber underneath the lead um, you can see here we've got, God only knows why, but you've got bits of bloody blue plastic. You've got anything and everything in here that's that's wrong. Um, and you can see, uh, if you look up there, you'll see there are shakes in the timber. And even the shakes, they've tried to fill them with silicon. Uh, absolutely the last worst thing you could do is try and do something like that. You do not fill shakes in the timber because once water gets in, it can't get out. This, well, it's hard as a hobs of hell. It's not lime, it looks like it, but it's a chemical compound. I think it's a, a, almost like a resin. Um, God only knows what somebody's done with it. What I've done is deconstructed a little bit of it down here. And this is what I do when I'm doing building surveys. Um, you'll see there's some sticky, gungy, tarry shite. I don't know if you can see it in the in the back of that hole. That is compriband. That is my, my old worst enemy. Every time you hit a timber frame with compriband, you know it's going to leak like a sieve because this damn stuff just doesn't... It doesn't make a watertight joint. And people put it all around panels and it's not watertight. Where I've, I've extracted a bit, you'll see... Uh, it's a little bit flaky and it's actually a wood wall board and then they've got this chemical whatever it is on here completely impermeable white crap uh, it's it's got a white silica sand in it it's, it's something you buy in a tub and scrape on no idea what it is but you can see that round the edge it's cracked and this is typical for every single joint everywhere around this building where it's been done with this stuff so water is getting in 
it's hitting the contraband and it's just traveling straight through because this is not a seal this is just um, a tarry mess it can't get out because this is trapping everything so it's a horror story and the the house is is wet inside as a result um, it actually gets worse here because the um, whoever did it clearly just wanted to mess with timber and so they've fiddled around they they the whole thing's been put on plastic so the, the bottom of the timber is going to get wet and sweat on top of the plastic you never do this you never ever use a membrane under the timber it's just not you can't do it and then if you look to my absolute amazement we've got great gobs of foam this is just expanding foam look at it bloody goops of it uh, so we got a plinth a stone plinth and they haven't even rebuilt the stone plinth properly they've not even limed it up all they've done is they span the gaps with a piece of timber shoved a couple of wedges in to hold it up and left it just jacked up and if you look there there's a, another little bit just uh, where is it there just jacked up on a couple of bits of slate and this is a serious no-no this is what you do not do with a timber frame so I think this is more a case of what can go wrong when you get a contractor who says oh I know how to do timber frames well actually no he bloody well doesn't and he potentially costs somebody I think to replace this gable to work on it properly and and get it back to what it needs to be you're probably looking at about 60 70 thousand it leaks like a sieve all these panels need to come out and they all need to be done again properly so uh, the owner previous owner spent a lot of money here and it was all wasted um, I think what I'll do is I'll stop this and then I'm going to go around and do another video showing some of the other stuff on the side so it'll be video part two